A SOC analyst role is one of the most sought after cybersecurity professions and the main reason for that is, is because it's pretty easy to get into the cybersecurity domain via this route. In this video, I'm going to break down a step-by-step -step process on how to be a SOC analyst. How's it going guys and welcome to another video. If you're new here, my name is Royden and I work as a cybersecurity professional, specifically in network security and I've worked for many critical sectors like governments, banks, etc. Before we understand what a SOC analyst does, let's try and wrap our heads around the SOC. The SOC stands for Security Operations Center and it's responsible for dealing with security events on an organizational and technical level. In order to do so, the SOC works 24-7 or around the clock. Hence, you can already gauge by all of these statements that working in the Security Operations Center is so crucial. The SOC team consists of different types of engineers ranging from SOC analysts that are level one, two, or three. You've got threat hunters, incident response engineers, digital forensic engineers, etc. And out of all of these different job titles within the SOC, the main roles or duties of a SOC analyst include monitoring and checking any logs related to security events arising within the organization. And this involves dealing with a lot of logs arising from SIEM tools, network monitoring devices, endpoint detection and monitoring devices, etc. Other than sifting through thousands and thousands of logs, a SOC analyst's role also includes investigating these alerts and determining whether you've got false positives, false negatives, what are the different things you need to take action on, whether or not these specific events should be investigated further or escalated to the more specialized teams. Threat hunting is also a very integral part of a SOC analyst's role, wherein it's very easy that some of the tools miss any genuine threats that let's say would be generated from uh, security devices or operations within the organization. But it's a SOC analyst's responsibility to dive further and look for these hidden threats. Other than checking logs, analyzing them and detecting any false positives or false negatives, a SOC analyst's role is to document all of this into let's say a report format and collaborate with other stakeholders within the organization or other specialized um, professionals within the SOC. Hence, in order to cater to these specific roles and responsibilities, the technical skills that a SOC analyst needs to possess would be fundamentals or foundations of network engineering. And this would include knowing the TCP IP model, uh, knowing how to use Wireshark, how to check network logs, how to look for different things within Wireshark entries, because that's very important when you're trying to debug or investigate anything on the network level. A SOC analyst also needs to have basic knowledge on the different types of operating systems like Linux, Windows, etc. And this includes proficiency with knowing the different commands to run on these operating systems if any debugging or log generation or analyzing needs to be done with respect to these operating systems. Speaking earlier about threat intelligence, therefore a SOC analyst needs to know a little bit about threat intelligence. I wouldn't say completely in detail, but um, basic understanding of threat intelligence and incident response, what are the different stages just so that they're familiar with the process if they come across any event or log that is malicious and needs to be escalated to the right teams. And due to the need of a SOC analyst to collaborate with other stakeholders and organizational members, soft skills or you know documentation, how to speak to um, higher ups, all of that stuff which falls under the soft skill umbrella is also something that a SOC analyst need to possess. In order to tick these skills off, the preparation that a SOC analyst can do would be to know the basics of IT, which include how systems work, um, how the devices within a network operate, uh, basics of what is routing, what is switching, not in depth, just so that they're familiar with, okay, this is how the day-to-day -day operation of an infrastructure or a network takes place. Because if you've got to analyze something, you've got to know how it's functioning in the first place. Let's say you're completely new to IT and you have no idea on any of this basic foundational stuff. There are three certifications that are offered by CompTIA, which can be used to overcome that issue and get yourself familiar with the foundation level concepts. And they are the CompTIA A+, Network+, and Security+. The CompTIA Network+, and Security+, is something that I would highly recommend because it teaches you the foundations of networking and security. And CompTIA is widely regarded as a well-known certification out there. Now, while there are many resources that can help you learn and pass the Network Plus and Security Plus, I would highly recommend trying Zero to Mastery, which is a platform that has the Network Plus and Security Plus uh, training on there. And it's got very good ratings and a lot of students around the world are also 
referring to that specific course on zero to mastery if you want to uh, check that course out the link is going to be in the description you can just click on it explore what the course is offering it's about nine hours for both of those so let's say if you get the course from zero to mastery it'll take you around a week to two weeks to complete the network plus and security plus training hence that's something i would highly recommend check the description go over to the website and you can buy the course the monthly subscription is around 25 us dollars but as i said if you get like a monthly subscription you can complete the course in two weeks what these certifications will do is that it will give you a foothold into entering the domain as let's say a fresher or a beginner now within the SOC analyst realm as well there are different levels so you've got level one level two level three so as you go higher, the more experience you get, the more you climb these different levels. And if you're looking for like a more specialized SOC analyst certification, you can do the certified SOC analyst by EC Council. Other than this, it's also important that, you know, you have a good understanding hands on with SIEM tools. Now, there are certifications offered for uh, SIEM tools as well. For example, Splunk has their own certification if you want to be well versed with Splunk. Again, Splunk is a very commonly used industry wide tool that you can use, but Let's say you don't want to do the SIEM certification, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure that you get good hands-on stuff. And in order to do so, what you can do is the best way is to have virtual machines set up. You can either use VMware Workstation, you can use VirtualBox, have different operating systems on there. You can have a Linux machine, you can have a Windows machine, you can have Kali Linux, which can be your attacker. You can have a separate system where you set up let's say a seam tool, you can use Splunk. They've got free editions for home lab use. And what you can do is you can build this whole ecosystem as like a virtual SOC uh, analyst ecosystem and use this to generate logs, check these logs, try attacking your genuine Windows operating system through this malicious Kali Linux machine, see what logs are generated, see what's being picked up and practice, practice and practice. What you can also do is you can sign up with either try hack me or hack the box. While this is more penetration testing focused, it's always good to do the foundational stuff because as I said, if you want to be a level one SOC engineer or you want to be like an entry level cybersecurity engineer, you need to know the functioning of cybersecurity as a whole, not in depth, but at least the basic stuff. And it's always good to learn new things every now and then. Speaking about the tools that are used in the industry again, um, for SIEM, as I said earlier as well, Splunk, um, IBM, QRadar, Logarithm, you've got uh, Microsoft Sentinel for endpoint detection and response. There is CrowdStrike, there is Microsoft Defender for endpoints. For um, network monitoring and checking of network um, logs, you can use Wireshark. For um, vulnerability scanning, you can use Nessus, for example. So these are the different tools that a SOC analyst needs to be well versed with or at least know how to use. Working with ticketing systems like Jira or ServiceNow, is also very important from a SOC analyst perspective because if you see any issues, you can generate tickets, log any requests with other teams, escalations, etc. through these ticketing systems like ServiceNow or Jira. So if you do all of this stuff, I'm pretty sure that you are in a prime position to get a SOC analyst role. And once you get a SOC analyst role and you get that experience in, you can then look to advance into other fields within cybersecurity, like, you know, penetration testing, if you want to go into threat intelligence, digital forensics, incident response. Once you get in, you can then choose to branch out into a more specialized field. If you want some more idea on the different types of cybersecurity fields and what are the difficulty ratings associated with those, you can check this video. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. If you like it, drop a like, a comment, and I'll see you in the next video.